Hi everyone, in this lesson we're going to be looking at the cosine function and in the last lesson we grabbed the sine function and the patterns are just a little bit different. So we're going to do what we did with the sine function. First we're going to mark up the unit circle in radians and we're going to mark up all the coordinates that are on the axes. So at this first coordinate at 1, 0, we're at 0. And then when we get to 90 degrees or pi over 2, we're going to talk about all of these angles in radians. At the next coordinate, we're at pi. That's 180 degrees. At 270 degrees in radians, that's 3 pi over 2. And then we go back to 2 pi. So just like the sine function, we're going to have a five-point pattern. But instead of looking at the y-coordinate, this time we're going to be looking at the x-coordinate. So the cosine function is the x-coordinate. And so we're going to be looking at 1, and then 0, and then negative 1, 0, and then back to 1. That's going to be our pattern. So first we're going to mark up our graph here. And we have a five-point pattern, again, just like sine function. So 1, 2, three, four, five. And this function also goes between positive one and negative one. I'm going to do a dashed line to represent the max of my graph and the minimum of the graph. And our center is right, it's going to be right on the x-axis. Okay, so at zero, the cosine, the x-coordinate is one. So we're starting, our first point is going to be plotted at 1. At pi over 2, the cosine is 0. At pi, the cosine is negative 1. At 3 pi over 2, the cosine is 0. And at 2 pi, the cosine is back to 1. So we're at 0, we're at pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. Now let's sketch our graph. And this graph will continue indefinitely to the left and to the right. Using the graph above, we're going to answer the following questions. What is the period and what is the amplitude? Right now, as you know, the amplitude is the distance from the center. So we're, our distance from the center is 1 in the cosine graph. So A is equal to 1. A is also the value that's in front of cosine. And so if you look at the parent function up here, y equals the cosine of theta, the value in front is 1. We know that the amplitude is 1. The period is going to be 2 pi over b. And for the parent function, the value of b is 1, the value in front of theta, and our parent function is 1. So the period is 2 pi over 1, which is just 2 pi. We want to know the domain and the range. So the domain of the function is all the x values that are possible. So we're going to be continuing definitely to the right and continuing definitely to the left. So all real numbers are included in our domain. And for the range, we're going between negative 1 and 1 and including negative 1 and 1. Examine the cycle of the cosine function between 0 and 2 pi. Where in the cycle do the maximums occur, where do the minimums occur, and where do the zeros occur? All right, so our maximums are occurring at 0 and 2 pi. Our minimum occurs at pi. And the zeros occur at pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. Now we'll look at the properties of cosine functions. A is the amplitude, that's the distance from the center, just like it was for the sine function. 
If A is less than zero, we have a reflection over the x-axis. B is the number of cycles in the interval from zero to two pi. Two pi over B is the period of the function, the length of one complete cycle. And so if A is greater than zero, we have a five point pattern. It goes max, zero, min, zero, max. If A is less than zero, then we're reflecting over the x-axis and the pattern becomes min, zero, max, zero, min. So we're gonna sketch the following graphs from zero to two pi. We can see with letter A that our amplitude is one and a half. So our distance from the center is one and a half. So I'm gonna mark the maximum is gonna be at 1.5 right here. And my minimum is gonna be at negative 1.5. And my center remains right on the x-axis. Now the next part is determining the period. The period is going to be 2 pi over b. And here we have 2. b is 2. So our period is 2 pi over 2, which is just pi. So we end our 5-point pattern at pi. So our period ends at pi, but remember, we want to sketch the graph from 0 to 2 pi. So we're going to sketch two cycles of the graph. So we're going to do one cycle, one, two, three, four, five, ending at pi, and then one, two, three, four, five, ending at two pi. Pi plus pi is two pi. All right, and we don't have a negative in front, so we know that our pattern is going to be max, zero, min, zero, max. So let's plot our points. Yeah, max, zero, min, zero, max, max, zero, min, zero, max. And we'll sketch that. All right, moving on to letter B. We want to notice first off that we do have that negative in front. So that means that we are going to reflect over the x-axis. Our amplitude is a half. Our distance from the center is a half. So I'm going to mark the top and bottom of my graph at a half and at negative a half. And my center remains on the x-axis. So that takes care of our amplitude. Now we'll look at the period. The period is 2 pi over b. And b here is 4. So the period is 2 pi over 4, and if I simplify that, that's just pi over 2. Now remember, I am sketching graphs from 0 to 2 pi. So I have pi over 2, and then if I add pi over 2 to get to the next full cycle, that would be pi. And then if I add pi over 2 to pi, I get 3 pi over 2. That's still not to 2 pi. So at 3 pi over 2, if I add pi over 2, I get to 4 pi over 2, which is 2 pi. So let me show you that. So we're going to actually have four cycles of this graph. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's pi over 2. Now to do the next full cycle, I have to add pi over 2. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That gets me to pi. All right, now I have to add pi over 2 again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's 3 pi over 2. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 3 pi over 2 plus pi over 2, the next full cycle, gives me 4 pi over 2, which is 2 pi. Let me extend this a little. Right, now I can plot my pattern. Now, remember, we made a note that we're reflecting over the x-axis, so our pattern is going to be min, zero, max, zero, min. So we're min, zero, max, zero, min. 
min zero max zero min min zero max zero min min zero max zero min and sketch your curve all right so that's letter a and letter b all right so that takes care of number one number two write a cosine function with amplitude four period six pi and a is greater than zero so the trickiest part of this one is examining the period so that we can find b. Well, we know that the period is 2 pi over b, and I'm being told that the period is 6 pi. I'm going to write that as a fraction, 6 pi over 1. Now I can cross multiply. 2 pi times 1 is 2 pi. And cross multiply 6 pi times b, I get 6 pi b. Solve for b. So we're going to divide both sides by 6 pi. When we simplify that, we get b is equal to 2 sixths, which is equal to 1 third. So we know a is equal to 4, b is equal to 1 third, and we know that a is positive. Now we can write our cosine function. So y is equal to 4, the cosine of 1 third theta. All right, and last one, number 3, our amplitude is 2. This time a is going to be less than 0. a will be negative. And our period is 1 eighth. All right, so the period of the cosine function is 2 pi over b, and that period is equal to 1 eighth. So we're going to cross multiply. 2 pi times 8 is 16 pi, and 1 times b is equal to b. So b is 16 pi. So now we can put that together. So y is equal to negative 2, because we were told a is less than 0, and the value of a is 2, the cosine of 16 pi. You could use theta or x. I'm going to use x this time. And that's it for number 3. Okay, everyone, that's all I have for this lesson. Thanks for watching.